In this video, we're going to talk about how to know which equation to use when trying to solve a motion problem in physics. Um, sometimes we use the word kinematic instead of motion, and so these are often called the kinematic equations. Somewhere in your notebook or on a note card or a piece of paper, write constant velocity and uniform acceleration really big in two columns. And we're going to write all of these equations down so that they're in one place. Then we can use this as sort of like a Pokedex to decide which equation we need to use in battle to be successful. For constant velocity, there's only one equation. It is position equals average velocity times time plus initial position. Um, so the V with a bar above it, a bar above a letter means that it's the average. Um, and this little zero is something that we call the knot, uh, and it just means the initial position or the position at zero time. You can write this equation a lot of different ways. Um, it's basically just speed equals distance over time, rearranged in fun, fancy letters. Uh, but you can get away with solving any problem where an object is moving with constant velocity. Um, so like the cruise, you know, car and cruise control with that one equation. For objects that are speeding up or slowing down, we say that they're moving with uniform acceleration, meaning they're gaining speed um, the same amount every second. So either they're gaining speed or they're losing speed. Either one of those things, speeding up or slowing down, we call an acceleration. We have four equations. One is the equation for velocity, which is equal to the average acceleration times time plus the initial velocity. For position, since as you speed up or slow down, you're either gaining more distance as you go or less distance as you go, uh, we have two equations that we can use. One is just half of v plus v naught times t. That's the average velocity times time plus the initial position. Again, if you want, you can always take the initial position, subtract it from both sides so that you get x minus x naught, which is just delta x, and you have it on the left right there. Um, but for this equation sheet, I'm going to leave it as plus x naught. And if something doesn't tell me where it starts, I'm going to assume it starts at zero. The other equation we have for position is 1 half of the acceleration times time squared plus the initial velocity with time plus the initial position. And again, if I wanted to, I could write this as delta x on the left without the initial, initial position on the right. But I like to put the initial position on the right so that all of my variables are out there and I'm prepared for anything. There's one last equation we have for accelerated motion, and that's the ain't got no time equation. V squared equals 2 times the acceleration times x minus x naught, which we could, again, just write that as delta x. And in this case, I am going to include it as delta x uh, plus the initial velocity squared. So here they are, all of our equations. Have these written down in one spot so that you can always go to that one spot and use it when trying to solve problems. Because physics problems are hard, like really hard, like so hard they make you want to cry. Like even just thinking about it, you're probably crying a little bit right now. That's totally fine. As a physics teacher, we like to say when you are up against a physics problem that you don't know how to answer, you should just guess. which is an acronym. Uh, this stands for Givens, Unknowns, Equations, Solve, and Simplify. It's a simple acronym to help you remember a problem-solving process, where to get started and where to go next. Let's use it in a couple of examples. A small dog is at rest eating your chalupa. You confront the bandit and he runs away from you, speeding up at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared. How much time does it take for this low life to run 16 meters? Okay, so I'm going to start with givens. This means I look at the information that is given to me. Uh, and the first thing that stands out to me is this speeding up at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared. I know that that is the acceleration. The unit is the dead giveaway. So acceleration equals, sorry, <laughs> not A equals A. That's insane. Um, instead, we're going to write 0 0.5 like a normal person, meters per second squared. Okay, so that's the acceleration. The next thing I notice that it gives me uh, is this 16 meters. So I could do a couple of things. I could write 16 meters is the displacement, delta x equals 16 meters. Um, or what I like to do is I like to say the final position is 16 meters and the initial position, x naught, is zero. If it doesn't tell me what x naught is, I'm just going to assume that it's zero. And then I end up 16 meters from there. Okay, it also says the dog is at rest. That is a key given piece of information. It tells me my v naught, my initial velocity, is zero. 
Okay, so I've got A, X, X naught, V naught. That's my given information. Now I move on to the U and guess, which is unknown. What's the unknown thing they want me to find? That would be time. So what I'll do is I will write down T equals question mark to remind me that that is the variable I'm looking for. Now that I have all of these variables written down on my paper, I'm going to go to my Pokedex of motion equations and try and find the equation that has all of these things in it. So go to your motion equations. Do you see an equation that has all of these variables in it? Do you? Do you? It's this one. x equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. If you were able to see that that was the right equation, good job. Golf clap for you. Let's start solving it. So Gibbons, unknowns, equations, solve. When I solve an equation, I like to do two things. First, I want to get rid of anything that is zero, because if it's zero, it goes away. Then I will rearrange to get the thing I'm looking for by itself. Let's take a look at any zeros. The initial position is zero, so that goes away. If you got pencil, we cross it out. If you don't have a pencil, go get a pencil. The initial velocity is also zero, so that means I can get rid of v naught times t, because zero times anything is zero. It disappears. Congratulations. At this point, I'm still solving, and before I plug any numbers and units in, I'm just going to rearrange this equation to get t by itself. That way, when I plug in the numbers, it's very easy, and I don't have to move a bunch of numbers and units around like an idiot. I'm a really smart person, and I am plugging it into an equation I've made. So let's do algebra on letters. It's not that hard. Multiply both sides by 2. Good job. Now, divide by a because the acceleration cancels out. So I've got t squared equals 2x over a. And of course, the last thing I need to do is square root both sides, which gets rid of that square on t. OK, so to find the time, I need to plug in my numbers and simplify. That's the last s. The square root of 2 times 16 meters over the acceleration, 0.5 meters per second squared. All right. So now I simplify this whole thing. The meters cancel out, um, which leaves me 1 over 1 over seconds squared, which is the same thing as saying seconds squared. 2 times 16 is 32. Divided by 0.5 is really like multiplying it by 2, so that's 64. Well, now I need to keep simplifying. I square root 64, which is 8, and the square root of s squared is s. So the time it took is 8 seconds. Oh my god, you did so good. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. You're physicsing. Let's do another example. The CEO of SoundCloud leaps for joy after exploiting teenagers for millions of dollars. Before leaping, he is at rest. After 0.2 seconds of pushing off the ground, he is traveling up with a speed of 3 meters per second. What is his acceleration? Okay, so let's start with the given information. Um, right away, I see this at rest thing. And I remember at rest means the initial velocity is zero. Always like the most important thing that you can be given. Then I notice the time is 0.2 seconds. So I write it down because it's super easy and it helps me know what I'm doing. And I know you don't like to show your work, but Jesus, just show some work. All right, next I'm told the velocity at the end is three meters a second. So I call that V. Ooh, and the acceleration is my unknown, the thing I want to find. OK, so now I've got my givens and my unknowns. I go to my equations. I go to my equations, and I think, what equation has v naught, t, v, and a in it? Go to your equations and see if you can figure out which one it is. Did you figure it out? Did you get v equals a t plus v naught? If so, snaps for you. OK. Now we solve. Plug in anything that's zero, which I see my initial velocity is zero, so this goes away. And rearrange to get a by itself, which is really easy. I just divide both sides by t. So divide both sides by t. I'm going to get the acceleration is v over t, or 3 meters a second 
divided by 0.2 seconds, which will give me 15 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Good job. You're doing great. Let's do another. You're cruising 3 meters a second on your skateboard when you realize a parked car is 12 meters in front of you. You power slide to a stop, narrowly avoiding the car. What was your acceleration while sliding to a stop? Okay, so let's start with G, given, right, on our guess method. Uh, I'm given that I'm going 3 meters a second, so that's my initial velocity. Then I realize there's a parked car 12 meters in front of me. That tells me that I'm going to make my initial position 0 and my final position 12, because the car is 12 away from where I'm at at that moment. Then I power slide to a stop. Ooh, stop. What does that mean? That means your final velocity is 0. Good job. Uh, and it wants you to find the acceleration. OK. So now I look for an equation that has v naught, x naught, x, v, and a. Which, remember, if we want, we can call x naught and x. We can do x minus x naught. That's what delta x is. It's x minus x naught, which should just be 12 minus 0, or 12. So we can always call that 12 delta x if we want. But I'm going to go look at my equations, and I'm going to think, which one has all of this information in it? Do you see it? Let me ask you this. Which equation doesn't have time? Oh my god, there isn't time. What do we do? We use the ain't got no time equation. The ain't, not got, no, ain't got no time equation is a really good and useful equation to use if they don't give you time. It's pretty easy. That's why I call it that. OK, so now let's solve. Um, the final velocity is 0. That's important. That means shh, this goes away. Um, and since there's nothing on the left, and that's really weird, I'm just going to write a 0 because there's nothing on the left because 0 is nothing. Or is it something because it represents nothing? I don't know. Now I need to get a by itself. So to get the acceleration by itself, I would subtract v naught squared from both sides. And then I see I need to get rid of the 2 and the delta x. So I would divide by 2 and delta x. Because when I divide the right by 2 and delta x, 2 goes away, 2 goes away, delta x, it goes away. Great. So now I have the acceleration is negative v naught squared over 2 delta x. Fantastic. Uh, negative 3 meters per second, the whole thing squared. That's still going to be negative because it's the 3 that's being squared without the negative inside of it. Then I divide by 2 times 12 uh, meters. OK, so this gives me 9, negative 9 meters squared per second squared over 24 meters. Um, that meter is going to cancel out a meter squared. And I get negative 3.75. So 0.3, sorry, 0.375 meters per second squared. Great. Now, the negative is good because my initial velocity was positive, And in order for me to be slowing down, the acceleration has to be in the opposite direction. So negative. Let's do one more. You scootin' on a sick razor with a constant speed of 3 meters per second. How much time does it take you to go 10 meters? Let's start with the given information. Constant speed. Constant speed. God, there's something about constant. What does constant mean? Oh, yeah. Constant speed. It's a constant velocity. That means I'm not speeding up or slowing down, which means I just need to use this one equation. Oh, that's great. Well, that should be easy when it comes to the equation part. But anyway, let's see what they give me. So that three meters a second, since, since it's not changing, I can call that the average, um, because the average of something that's not changing is just that number. Like if, I have, if I'm going 3 miles an hour, and then later I'm going 3 miles an hour, and I ask you what my average was, it would be 3 miles an hour. So we'll just call that the average, not the beginning or the ending, so it's not v or v naught. So the average velocity is 3. And 10 meters. OK, so that means I could either write this as delta x equals 10 meters, or I'll say x naught equals 0, x equals 10. I like that one. All right, now I think about what's unknown, time. So time is the thing that I want to find. Now, I already know my equation because it's constant speed. There's only one equation. I don't even have to think about it. That is the equation. It's awesome. It just always works. 
uh, but I do need to solve it. So let's get rid of things that are zero. The initial position is zero. It's funny to x out an x, isn't it? And to solve for time, I need to divide both sides by the average velocity, because then the average velocity goes away. OK, so time is x over v, or 10 meters over 3 meters per second. Meters cancel out, and I'm going to get 3.3 forever, or repeating. Uh, and 1 over 1 over seconds is the same thing as saying seconds. Voila, we solved the problem. OK, you're awesome. You know you're awesome. You can do physics. And if you actually got to the end of this video, then that's great, because you're super smart. And the other people that didn't get to the end of this video, they're not as smart, because they think they can do it. But they didn't do it, and it's not going to be good for them. But it's going to be good for you. And if you need more help, you can just go back to this video, and you can see the problem that you you know, had some trouble with, and it's going to be great and awesome, and you're super cool, and you're going to be so successful, and everybody likes you. And one day, you're going to find that dog or cat that you've always been looking for or maybe a chinchilla. This video is over.